What's going on, guys? We're going deep into the mountains this morning. We're gonna do some fishing and exploring. Let's go. Wait till you guys see this spot. This is uh, this is pretty special. This is the really hot pool. This is the semi-hot pool, which is probably the one I'll get in. And then down there is the uh, is the colder pool. This is nice. This is nice. All right, guys, so we got some nice flame going on under there. Let's cook up some bacon and eggs. First thing we're gonna do, got a little butter there. Make sure eggs don't stick to the pan. You know what? I'm actually gonna cook the bacon first. Then I'll cook the eggs in the bacon grease. I don't know what I'm thinking. Very good. The 
bacon in <laughs> bacon in butter. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, just the smell of that is amazing. <laughs> I'm getting excited over this. There are a few foods worth getting exciting excited over. This 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 is the Ritz right here. Sitting in a hot hot springs. Got this amazing view. And then we got bacon. All right, let's flip this here. Oh yeah, crispy on the edges. And then look at all that grease we're gonna have to cook the eggs in. These are gonna be some amazing eggs. Okay. It's, I actually bought the ends and pieces of the bacon. Like I got that cheap stuff at the, at the store. And so it made this crazy inordinate amount of, of um, grease. I might have to drain some of that off because that's, that's kind of absurd right there. I'm gonna be eating half eggs, half bacon grease. All right, I'm gonna pour off a little bit of my bacon grease there. There we go. Ah, there we go. Place it back on the burner there. Now for the eggs. Oh. So far it's a 50-50 mix of bacon grease and eggs. Oh, this is funny. Uh-oh. I just thought of something. I have nothing but a fork. I brought nothing but a fork to um, cook my eggs. What I may have to do, I'm just going to let him, I'm not going to, well, I guess I'll scramble <laughs> a little bit. Hmm. I brought nothing to, like, flip them over. So I'll just have to make do with this fork. I had planned on going through like one of our main lights with a friend um, and doing some bass fishing. But it was so rainy down in the valley, so well, we'll all come up here and see what's going on up here. And I'm glad I did. Bacon makes everything better though. Alright, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go fish. I'm going to leave my swimsuit on because I still want to get in my hot spring. And I have to wade across to a good looking fishing spot over there. First lure of the day. We got a Rapala jerkbait. It's pretty bold to go with jerkbait right off the bat, but uh, I've caught my biggest trout on jerkbaits before. So I'm a little bit worried that the fishing might be a little bit tough. Uh, the, the, the river's a little bit high. And. Um, I don't know, I just, I hope that that doesn't mess up the trout fishing. Look at that. The sun is coming out a little bit between the clouds.
What do we have here? Is this warm too? Oh, it is. Not super hot. And this little pool right here is warm. <laughs> this is so cool. I'm gonna fish right over here. In fact, look at this great little transition spot. Well guys, thank you so much for hanging out this morning, but a storm has struck as you can see, and it is very difficult to film in the rain without getting your cameras ruined. So I'm gonna call it a day for now, and uh, but I'm coming back real soon because it is so gorgeous up here, and I really, really wanna catch a wild rainbow trout and cook it up. Meanwhile, look at the view. Look at this view. Ah, oh, man, down there in that gorge, there are so many places to come out here and explore and fish. I'm coming back out. See you guys in a few days. So what I've been doing is just been driving along, looking for new fishing places, pulling off wherever might, just all these little turnoffs, just pulling off whatever might look good and uh, just looking for new fishing spots. <laughs> I love this kind of thing. Got a whole bunch of stuff today for trout. I've got my tap usual like spinners and a jerk bait and all that. Got some night crawlers, some salmon eggs. I'm getting low on those, need to buy some more. Some of these little trout soft plastics. There we go. I think the first lure I'm gonna start off with is the usual jerk bait. This little Rapala sinking jerk bait. It's just a killer for big trout. Especially in that gold color. I you only use two colors, gold or rainbow trout. All right, guys. Start slinging this jerk bait. First cast of the day. I'm gonna try this little spinner here. This is a, I think it's a Panther Martin. And it has, um, <laughs> almost looks like a hornet color. You might call it yellow dots, black body. A little bit more subtle than the flashing ones. I'm gonna try it. Guys, I have one. I have one. I have a trout. Pretty good too. Yes! Oh! Sweet! A rainbow trout! Look how beautiful that is. 
I can't believe it. I've been fishing a long time up here. Look how he, look how he just ate that lure. That, that trout wanted it. Oh man, this is a keeper too. Oh man, he got it really good. I'd have to keep this guy no matter what, even if I wasn't planning on eating any, but I am. All right, finally got the hook out. That is a full on wild trout right there, guys. That is so cool. Wow, finally, finally. Caught it on that little, like I said, I think it's a Panther Martin, I think. Nothing too flashy. It, uh, instead of the, that blade being gold or silver, it's just black with some dots on it. Cool. Let's try to get another one. I just cast it out into the current. Right in the raging stuff. But then bring it out just a little bit calmer. You know what? Up there looks good. If I can get close to those rapids, yeah, that looks real good. What I'm doing is I'm just throwing the spinner out and then I'm letting the current do most of the work. I reel in real slowly to keep it above the rocks. But otherwise, out there in the current, that blade, I got one, I got one. Just spins around is what I was gonna say. Look at this, another, <laughs> another rainbow trout. Another wild rainbow trout. That is so cool. What I was saying was, throwing it out there, and I'm just letting the current do most of the work, and that blade is spinning real fast underwater. Those trout just love it. This one ate it too. I mean, he just totally annihilated. That hook is in there deep. Hmm. You know what, this guy, he has a lot of life in him. Whoa, whoa, and there he goes. I thought I'd have to revive him. <laughs> Never mind. We got propane, stove cup. We have bread, lettuce and tomato, and pickles. We have trout, knife. I'm just gonna do a simple gut on the trout. Nothing too fancy. Just cut the head off. Most of the guts and stuff come out too. Oh, this is crazy. Let me get so you guys can see this close. If you're a little squeamish, you may not want to watch this part. Look at how in the trout's stomach. Look at that. They're like little grubs and stuff. This little grubs looks like um Looks like part of a helgamite, which is like an underwater, uh, they just live under rocks and stuff. But you can see there's a whole grub right there. That's, and another one, right? There's two whole grubs. Oh look, that's a cricket. That's, there's, it's hard to see, but that's a little cricket right there. Actually, this grub, it looks like a caterpillar. That is a caterpillar. That's crazy. So they got some like wood grub or something right there, a caterpillar, and a cricket, at least. Take a trout head, throw that out there. Fish. There we go. Trout is done. Let's see how this tastes. So I have my sweet little portable gas set up. If you guys want to see how this is set up in more uh, detail, if you're new to my channel, I have a video of actually the first time that I used this, where I showed like how it worked and everything else. So I'll put that a link to that in the description. But I have this little propane. This is the propane tank, and my little portable pot and pan set up with spices and everything in it. Pan on top. So you hear a hiss. Whoa. Boom. Oh. A little bit bigger boom than I thought. We got scored trout right there. Sometimes I forget to do that. Got both sides. Score trout. Add some butter to this. Add some butter. Got 
Add some salt to him. You know what? That wasn't near enough butter. I am gonna add a little, whoa, 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 that was too much, too much. Well, kind of. I'm gonna add a lot of butter to this guy here. Well, you know what, now that has trout flavor on it, I kind of just have to leave it in there, I guess. Well, this will be one butter, <laughs> buttery trout, that's for sure. Oh, that looks good. Oh, you know what, I have to add, what am I doing? I'm not even paying attention. Add salt to it. I'm forgetting my Cajun seasoning. Oh, little Louisiana kitchen fish fry right there. Uh, blackened Cajun seasoning. Fish fry products, Cajun seasoning. I've been used, I've used this like, I don't know, like six times in a row the last time I've been out. What I do with this, um, with my trout, is that instead of trying to cut the fins off while it's raw, it, you have to cut them out and it's really hard. So what I do is I just, they come right out when uh, the trout's cooked. And then the tail and everything else just slides right off. And then you don't lose any of the meat when you do it this way. I'm debating whether or not to make fish sandwiches out of this or not. I brought all the stuff for fish sandwiches, but um, I don't know if I have enough trout to make a full fish sandwich. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take this trout out and I am going to make fish sandwiches. I was debating because this is kind of small, but I really like a fish sandwich. Last time I made them, it was amazing. What I'm going to do is I'm turning the burner back on and I'm going to, I'm going to heat up the bread. I've got a ton of butter here and uh, I'm going to heat up the bread and basically fry the bread in the butter, I think. Oh, it's a little too hot maybe, just a tad. That heats up immediately with, with that little, um, with that propane. <laughs> this is gonna be some buttery fish and some buttery bread. Then we cut up a little tomato while that's cooking, or frying. Boom. Oh. Fried bread, tomato, fresh tomato, fried bread, fresh caught wild trout, pickles. The pickles aren't wild. Put a skiff of mayonnaise on the bread. I turn the burner off. And we're gonna add our fish. Carefully picking out all of the bones. Look at this, we got enough trout. Some of our tomato, like so. You know what, that's too much tomato. I'm just gonna accent it with a little bit of tomato. Salt the little tomato, add some pickles. Boom, a few shreds of lettuce. And finally, beautiful piece of toasted bread right on top. I'm gonna eat this straight out of here. Straight out of the frying pan. <laughs> Say a little prayer. Mmm. Last time I made a fish sandwich, it needed the pickle. It wasn't quite right. I mean, it was amazing, but it wasn't quite right. And then a subscriber said, but I, I didn't know why it wasn't right. Uh, then a subscriber told me, you should add pickles to that sandwich. And I thought, bingo, that's what it needs. Now it is perfect. Mm. There's something really satisfying about catching it yourself too.
That's one of the best fish sandwiches I've ever made. Amazing. I got all the elements, lettuce, tomato, pickle, mayonnaise, and fish. Mm. That fish sandwich was delicious, but we still have some daylight. So I'm gonna go fish one more time. I'm gonna try this little, look at that spinner. This little rooster tail, and the, the blade on it is painted like the, uh, like the Panther Martin was, so it's not as flashy as, as most spinners, and that seems to be, that was what caught the other two trout. So I'm gonna try that and see if I can catch a bonus fish. I would love to bring a trout home for my dad, because he was gonna come out here with me, and he could so. Let's see if we can catch one more. I have one, I have one, another one. Oh, come on. Yes! <laughs> one more. Three trout on the day. Three full on wild trout. Let's bring him over here. I don't know. This guy looks a little small to keep. Yeah, he's he's just he's kind of borderline. Just a little too small. I'm gonna let him go. Gosh, he ate that good too. All of them are eating it really, really well. Too good actually. Oh, he's not doing too good. Well, I'm gonna be keeping this guy. No loss. Yep, I'm gonna keep this one. Here we are. Got the hook out. I actually killed him already so that he, um, so it didn't suffer anymore. The hook was in its gill. And when hooks get in like the gills, especially of trout, which trout are just a little bit more delicate than a lot of other fish. And um, uh, when, when hooks get in their gill, it usually kills them, especially a, uh, a treble hook like that. So anyway, keep this guy, not the biggest trout in the world, but still not too bad a one. Um, I was really hoping to catch one of these so I could bring it home for my dad because he was gonna come with me today and then right at the last minute, something came up and he couldn't, so, um, so he couldn't come out here with me, so anyway, I'm bringing him home a little trout. He loves trout just about as much as I do. So anyway, nice bonus fish, three trout on the day. Had to work hard for him, but it was fun. Super fun out here and they're all wild. There's something super satisfying about catching wild trout. Great day out here. So much fun out here. It's one of my favorite things to do. Thank you guys for hanging out today, and I will see you in the next one.